I've well, you know, myself. and for and forgive me for for this horrible transition, but you know who else has been mobile? Oh no, <laughs> Joya, Joya. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Oh, uh, roster mania kicks off. Michael with a fantastic segue straight into something that I so am excited. personally very excited about, at least the prospect of. Can't I do want to say this, and obviously this is the shift cast, and I'm sure that these guys have some information that all of you and even I do not have, but until you see the orgs tweet this, take it as you know a rumor, a rumor or expected. But mm -hmm. it's not, it's just not certain until it's certain. And that I think you guys would both agree with. You know, there are times in the past where Shift Absolutely. has had it all lined up. Players are lined up. Teams are lined up. Orgs are set. And it falls through. So, yeah. that being There's said. There's some funny stories we'll, we'll get to one day about how some of these things fall through. Um, yeah. But yeah. But that being said, Moist has officially, and this is official, released Joyo. And with that, I feel like it's fairly sure, sure as that. It can be. I mean, he, I, he's going to land on a team, obviously. Mm -hmm. Joyo's not going to be teamless, and I imagine it's going to be a, a solid team, and it looks like Oxygen's a great home for him. Um, what are what are our initial thoughts on that team? Um, Oski Archie is the rumor. Joyo replacing Ixo potentially. What do we think that that makes, uh, or what impact do we think that makes immediately as we move into split two? Jens, what do you think? I mean, it's just a better treat team, I would say, in general. Sure. I, I think it has a little bit more power behind it. It's yeah. a little bit more to, to bring to the Francophone mm -hmm. teams. I mean, that's what everyone's right. looking for, right? To beat at, least, at one. least one. At least one of the Francophone teams in points. Um, I mean, more than mm -hmm. just Solary. <laughs> <laughs> so at least two, actually. So at least two. And then, you know, getting that ticket yeah. to the second major, getting to London 3.0. I mean, that's what everyone's looking yeah. for right now. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's a decent change, but I mean, I'm more concerned about Moist, sure. obviously. Um, yeah, I just, it's, look, it's looking rough. It is. And, and not just Moist, I think, you know, you look outside those top four, because there's so much talent there. And there's not a whole lot left to go around. And I think that what we're seeing in this trade window, and we'll talk about a couple more, but what is left is consolidating. And so you've got yeah. like maybe a four, five, and six team right there, or excuse me, five, six, and seven teams, maybe an eighth team that is going to be genuinely competitive. But outside of that, it just looks really, really difficult. Yeah, I totally agree. I think Oxygen was, you know, they had a rough first regional and that kind of took them off the pace and they yeah. never were able to recover just because of how strong those top four French teams were. But, um, you know, I think the public opinion uh, on Joyo as a person has never changed. He's obviously an incredible right. guy, but the public opinion on him as a player is kind of soured. Um, there's, you know, sort of this narrative that he's just a, a freestyler, that he needs the perfect team around him to be able to yeah. um, uh, succeed. And, you know, that only kind of furthered by his old teammate, who a lot of people thought he was worse than him, becoming the MVP of the very next major that he leaves, right? right? Uh, which is no, obviously Juicy was fantastic. I think he was just put in a better spot and he was under a better system. And gentlemen, I don't think it has anything to do with Joyo as an individual. Um, but to me, this team feels a lot like in composition, a lot like the old liquid team that Oski played for, right? What was the, the, the sort of the identity of the old liquid team? You had a player who was a steady third, who yeah. would, you know, do his best to hold down the fort. Obviously, they were kind of inconsistent. But then you had two players who could do anything they wanted with the ball at the highest speed at the highest level. Um, and that Liquid team was the second best team in Europe until everyone kind of consolidated at the end of the year. And then they were the fourth best team in Europe, right? So, and that was when Europe was its strongest ever. Now you could say maybe it's even stronger with mm -hmm. Oxygen because I don't think there was a fifth team. I know Moist was okay uh, in that spring split, but... You know, when they went up to Worlds and they had to play some of the top North American teams, uh, the other EU teams looked like they were having no issues and Moist struggled against both G2 and Space Station. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think that's... I think this is a very much like a Liquid-style team where their peak is so high sure, because sure. of the mechanical ability and the speed that their players bring. But at the same time, I think there is room for inconsistency. Um, yeah. And I think they're just... They're, what they've done, I think Oxygen has an org, and I think Joyo's done, is they've given themselves a puncher's chance at the right time. Mm -hmm. Right. They might not be able to go 12 rounds with Carmen Corp. Right. Mm -hmm. But 
if they can land a couple knockout blows and you can beat them a couple times, you can qualify. And with the points being larger, you get there's a larger distribution of points in the second half of the year. That's sometimes what you need just to make it to the world championship. And once you get to the world championship, anything can happen, especially with a three month break where teams are going to probably change their identities if they're not doing as well as they used to be. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, really figure things out. So to me, it was a necessary move for Oxygen if they wanted to compete uh, at Lance this year. And I think it gives them, like I said, it might still be an outside chance, but it's the sure. chance that they need, which is that they can peak with the best of them. Yeah, yeah. So I'll say two things and then we can move on to our next topic or our next, uh, you know, rumor that we're hearing. Um, one, obviously, I've watched this auction team for a while. Even before I was with them, I was doing the commentating for those guys on on day ones and stuff. And what you described as like high ceiling, but like chronic inconsistency, that is the MO. You know, whether it was the Jorias iteration with Oli um, and then with Rise and then again with Ixo, I think it's very similar across the board where Oxygen has, um, since I have been watching this EU version, of course, they have been just a full speed ahead team and when they're all on mechanically, I mean, they are yeah. up there with the best of them, right? Like they just put you under so much pressure and they are so willing to push forward and be aggressive and just get in your face, steal your boost, bump you, you know, crazy, um, just unique and creative touches in the offensive half. A really European team. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but like you said, they do have those inconsistencies where if that's not on mechanically, they still kind of have that approach and it doesn't work the same because of those inconsistencies mechanically. Um, and, and I think you're right. I think this team could fall victim to that as well. Um, I'm, obviously, I hope they don't, but um, I, I think you're right. That, that could be a problem. Secondarily, um, I lost my point. Give me one second. Um, well, <laughs> just a total just, blank. Just quickly, we'll, we'll just bounce quickly and then we'll sure. come back when you remember yeah, it. Yeah. Um, so for the players that are left over on this, I mean, you know, Ixo doesn't have a team, and right. obviously there's a duo uh, in Oli and Rezzy who have some pedigree, right? They've, they've made some runs. Yep. Um, you know, what's... It, it, I guess it's a larger question. If you're not on one of those teams with one of those sort of, like, marquee players, what do you do? Because these European players are very good. Like, they would probably be land-contending players any other region. And so what what's next? Like, what do you do when you find yourself uh, almost feeling like the year you've been left out of even a chance to make? I mean, I'm sure they don't feel that way, but left out when of, of a chance to play with some of those players that are kind of proven to be consistent winners. Like, where do you go from there? Well, I'm sure I'm sure the players are still yeah, going to try course. their hardest. And there's plenty of teams like them that have been able to upset some of the bigger names in Europe over the past split. And that will continue to happen in the second split, I'm sure. Uh, I think we also have to look at this from the Orcs' perspective. They've just lost their mm -hmm. star, right? Moist have lost Joyo, and he was, he was like, the last part. Yeah. yeah, it was Moist. And then you have to see like what's in it for them. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, to shift rumor is that Ixo will join Olian Rezi, and then that could be a team, but like... Rizzo has been saying that uh, Moist won't leave right. Rocket League uh, as of now. I can see them coming back, but leaving temporarily. Yeah, sure. I, I think that's a realistic possibility right now because without Joyo, I mean, they need to. Have, I mean, they have Rizzo, I guess, and and they have you know the content creators from the org side, but there's just something missing. I think for for an org for an organization like Moist Esports, you want to have someone with the name value, sure. the brand value mm -hmm. of Joyo, and and they're lacking that at the moment. So I can see them right. dipping for a little bit. Yeah, that, that, that was going to be my thing. Is like I think you're totally right, and and they could try to find the next Queso because those mm -hmm. players were not Absolutely. they were not what they are now at that point. Obviously, they were on that on their way there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, there, there, there is some talent, and I do imagine that there will be some org shuffling as the season comes to a close. So it's not a huge break if they do decide to bounce out for a moment, see what happens, see what unfolds. Yeah. There's obviously going to be a huge roster shuffle at the end of the season. There always is. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, it may not... I would love to see Moist pick up a North yeah, American yeah, of team course. because we have all these content creator organizations in Europe that bring in a lot mm -hmm. of viewership, but 
It's kind of like well, they, in North America at the moment, and Moist would be the. And they also have a facility, that. you know, yeah, something that we hear. Yeah, yes. a, lot, a lot of the NA teams I, I kind can, of voice frustration about is they don't really have a, a site there at NA that they can go to. Uh, just a quick aside, and I know we did a couple quick asides, but I wanted to. I guess we, you know, I'm actually excited to see some of those orgs use their facilities. Hopefully, in the next RLCS split with central servers, because now yeah. Gen G can That's boot right. camp, yes. SSG can boot camp um, at their facilities. I'm saying. Um, I believe I don't G2 is a European org. There's another, yeah. oh, TSM has a, has a facility out and creams lives on the West coast. Um, so hopefully, you know, we get that boot camp buff as yeah. they say for the yeah. whole split. And I was going to say once again, um, you know, I think this is a perfect time to just kind of appreciate moist for being the creator org that sort of showed all the other yeah. creatives, the power of rocket league as a uh, spectator sport. Sure. I think that without, um those watch parties i know carmen corp was already in the already in the esport but i think uh moist criticals watch parties really showed a lot of big creators like hey if we can get in here like this is super easy to understand everybody that follows mm -hmm. me knows what to do we can all hop in here we can have a great time so hopefully they stay because they are yeah. undoubtedly a landmark organization even if they're a relatively short time in the in the space yeah absolutely and, and you see, too, with Joyo and his mom talking about how difficult it was to make that decision. They're obviously an incredible org that takes care of whoever is affiliated with them. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you. And, I mean, Moist as a brand is just incredible. Yeah, great merch. <laughs> okay, I do remember what I was going to say, though, so I hate to rewind a little bit. But Oxygen, regarding um, you know their potential moving into this final split, I think one of the things that is interesting when we look back is how many teams have had success with a move at that final split, that final leg, mm -hmm. you know, BDS yeah. with Seiko, BDS with Rise, um, you know, team uh, Zen, Zen Batira, uh, excuse me, Zen Vitality. Even um, LJ and Hoxer, or sorry, Space Station with yeah, Hoxer. Yeah, that's right. And so, obviously, we can theorize forever, but I think one of the things that that can do is just bring a fresh breath to your team, you know? Mm -hmm. um, sure. I think some of the French teams, they all obviously had success, but I think some of them certainly would have liked to perform better at the major. And they're, they're just bringing baggage with them mm -hmm. into this next split that Oxygen won't be bringing. This is kind of a new squad. It's, it's not a full new team, but it's a little bit of a reset. Like I said, you get yeah. that fresh breath of air and you think, okay, well, hey, one split left. Let's give it our go, see what we can do and hope for the best. And so I think that it doesn't mean a whole lot, but I think it fares well for Oxygen to just give them the best chance. Like you said, Michael, I think you summed it up perfect. It just gives them a chance. You know, they've put together a squad that can potentially uh, play with those four just absolute S tier teams with the Francophone teams. And um, they, they do have their hands full with that challenge. But if they can't do it, I, I think it's going to be it's going to be difficult for the rest of the region. <laughs> mm -hmm. But there is one team Absolutely. Mm -hmm. as I transition us once again, do that it again. I think also has a, as a puncher's chance with their newest acquisition. Yeah. And that is uh, rumored to be the old Magnifico core with a chronic who is trying to bring them to the Luna Galaxy, the orc he played under, the Portuguese orc that he played under uh, last split. Um, and so Stizzy, uh, their former third, has jetted off across the Atlantic to land down in Evo Town in Dignitas. Um, and, you know, I would, I mean, I think a lot of people see this actually as more of an upgrade for, yeah. you know, Magnifico, Magnifico. than yeah. Dignitas, right? Um, so what, what are you guys' thoughts on this? Like, we have Oxygen who have, added Joyo to Oski, who, you know, those are two extremely high level players, but you yep. have a team that performed better than them last split, adding one of the best players, probably the best remaining free agent or not. Yep. Uh, yeah. Free agent um, outside of Joyo in a chronic. So, you know, all bias taken away, Hootie, sure. which team do you think is going to perform better in this split oxygen or Luna galaxy? Um, <clears throat> I mean, I think oxygen and obviously everybody's going to scream bias, but I think, <laughs> I think Joyo and Oski. Ah, I think sense. Joyo and Oski are better than any player on that potential team with Magnifico. I think they're better than Atomic or Chronic and Tox, um, and they did outperform Oxygen. But it was with, if I'm not mistaken, what two two top eights and a top four, or maybe yeah, three it was top one eights. Point. It was one point. Yeah, it was one point. Um, and and Oxygen had a top four. Uh, both of them had the same problem that they just could they beat everybody else and and hmm. sometimes fell, but. Um, they really just had problems with all the French teams. So, yeah. um, I mean, it's a guess, but I think you're going to have to have 
you're going to have to have some firepower. Like you're going to have to put those French teams under some serious pressure if you want them to crack. Um, and I, I, I know that as well as anyone watching our team put Carmi Corp under eight minutes worth of pressure in overtime, and they just never broke. They're just yeah. not going to break. They're they're so solid and fundamental, and they communicate so well, and they, you know, they just they just flow and they're fluid, and and they just never seem off balance. And so, um, you know, I, I think uh, I think Joyo is an absolute S tier attacker creativity like potentially no other i think there are maybe a few other players that are capable of things he's capable of and i think oski you know maybe doesn't have that freestyle background creativity but i think he's just as mechanically dangerous so and fast. um so it just depends I, I i think the thing for me the reason why i feel a little bit more confident in oxygen than the other team is one i think uh, again those those oski and joyo i think i would rate higher than any of the others on that team but two i, I am curious how a chronic will fit in i think that's one of the things that i was curious about at the end of the liquid run, because I do think a chronic was stuck in a role where he can't shine as bright as he probably could on that liquid mm -hmm. team where he was just kind of stuck, you know, picking up the pieces for whatever was left. Um, Ato was very aggressive. I think Oski was very aggressive as well. And a chronic did a phenomenal job filling in the gaps and, and kind of being the anchor. But I think he could have been a, a, you know, a brighter star in a different environment. And so maybe Maybe this is that environment for him. Maybe Tox can take a little bit more of the defensive role, kind of the weight off of his shoulders there. Maybe they can let him off the chain a little bit. So I, I really don't know. The, the, like I said, the reason I went with Oxygen there is just because I, I feel curious and I, I don't know what that team composition is going to look like when it gets on the field. And the Corona kind of has to make a comeback sure. as well because I feel like he hasn't really appeared at the top echelon of, of Rocket League Esports uh, in a in a hot yeah. minute, so he has to get back to there, and absolutely is capable of it. But you know, I have to That's see right. it first before yeah. I believe it. Um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go against you guys, and I'm gonna say I actually think that uh, Magnifico Luna Galaxy, whatever they call, I think they're gonna be better, and I think that they have the best shot of all the non uh, e, uh, French teams to make the major. And I'll yeah. tell you why, because back in the era of the pandemic. I was watching some RLCS X Spring EU, the best split in the history of RLCS. It was the stupidest thing. <laughs> like nothing made sense. Nobody cared anymore because there's no world championship. And it was just incredible. And the brightest spot of that entire split was Aether. But the second brightest spot was this young Portuguese kid on BS plus competition named Macronic, who was 1v3ing an entire region. And the re and I and I still believe. I still believe personally that that's the true Acronic. And I think with Tox, who has been a lifetime kind of support player, yeah, he's finally going to be able to show that he is absolutely world-class in that carry role. I know he won't have to carry because Atomic uh, right. also is that way, but I think that that, first of all, being a caster, Hootie, I'm so sorry that you're going to have to cast those games because that is so tight. Like imagine trying to cast a, a, a high a high octane passing play between those two I, I, I i'm praying for it but i think that those two players are two players who have never been put in the perfect position to succeed the way they have here yeah and listen i've been known to maybe overrate a team or two on this podcast but it's not <laughs> happening this time okay i really really do believe that everybody in this situation is now getting the best situation they've been in maybe in their entire careers Mm -hmm. and I cannot wait to see them play. I'm really, really excited to see this team play. And yeah, uh, yeah I'm sign me up. Sign me up for for whatever org or not org this team plays under because I will be there to watch and support my boy, Chronic, who I've always been such a big fan of and who I think is poised to show everybody that he's still that kid who was 1v3 with God Smilla all those years ago. Yeah, I, I will say that I do feel like it's one of those two or nobody yeah. from... from outside of the top four, I think. And there there are going to be some good teams. You know, I think if the um, Oli Rezi Ixo team ends up being a squad, I think that will be a solid team. Mm -hmm. um, I think the new resolve or rumored resolve with um, Cash, Ivan, and Raziers, I think they've got potential as well. Um, obviously, top Cougars, they were yeah. kind of firing up towards the end of that last split. And so there are some other, like, quality teams uh, but as far as grabbing one of those major spots and, and really pushing the top four, I think it's going to have to be either this ma new Magnifico Luna Galaxy roster or, or potentially Oxygen. Can I be honest? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Cash Ivan Raziers is the most top eight coded team I think I've ever heard <laughs> in my whole life. Like they're the most like, oh, we went three two in Swiss and got KC three times in a row. Like that. That is. I'm sorry. I I think they're all good players, but like yeah. that just screams like bought like just bracketed constantly. And I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, well, I, I mean, to be really fair, top eight see. is. I know these players yeah. have high expectations, but top eight is it's a great place to be consistently. No, no. I mean, I still think top eight worthy. Right. Yeah. Gentlemen's got top eight twice, and they right. won the major, so you can do it. But I, I just want to see teams like uh, Luna uh, Galaxy, if, if that's or gets the team, uh, and Oxygen play against each other. Mm-hmm. I really want to mm-hmm. see them, you know, take on the other teams that are within that bracket and that are fighting for the same kind of position. You don't want an SSG because, situation for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you could see sure, an NA right, problem right. of quarterfinal so matchups, know. deciding the land spots, mm-hmm. uh, where you kind of want to see the teams actually fighting for those spots yeah. on their own mer- mer- merits, going up against the teams that they have to beat to mm-hmm. you know, really progress to the next stage first. Yeah. Well, we've got a question here. Will, uh, with six true land contenders, of course, this is a, an assumption, um, but I think a fair one. Will Europe run into the NA problem that we saw last split with quarterfinal matchups right. deciding land, which is kind of what we're talking about here? I mean, I, I feel like I feel like it's inevitable. Yeah, 100%. I, I mean, I don't know how you avoid it. It's going to come down to once again, which team goal differentials their way into not having to play a French team, yeah. which team gets a, a uh, you know, gets a good win in the, in, in round one against one of those French teams when they're and not the, warmed up. The French and, teams you know, could likely end up against one another. Yeah. Especially if Magnifico Luna galaxy slash oxygen can get yeah. some wins against them in Swiss. Yeah. It's going to end up being a seeding thing. And, you know, right. I, I, we've talked at length. Everyone's talked at length about how the format doesn't work for qualifications. We don't have to go down that right. road again, but it's almost inevitable now. Like it felt like last split. I know there are people that were fans of teams that were like, no, we can do it. But anyone who's a neutral was like, there's four teams in this region and there are the best four teams and they're going to make the land. And that's what it should be. But now similar to what space station was maybe M80, even though M80 kind of lost the favor of a lot of people due to, you know, their playoff performances. Um, Space station, for example, like people still will tell you that space station is the third best team in the region, whether you agree with it or not. Right. Um, and I think especially if, let's say, Oxygen comes out 3-0 first regional, they sure. are cooking. Doyle off the ceiling. Oski's just going crazy. I love that. Um, and Big then, Swiss oh, but oh, Vitality just had another average Swiss stage. Now they're 3-2 mm. and they're the eighth seed. And then all of a sudden they decide to do what they did at the land and wake up for a quarterfinal yeah. series, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're they top eight despite going 3-1 in the tournament and running yeah. into Zen and like a peaking Redosa. Like that shouldn't be how it is but i feel like it's almost inevitable that it's going to be yeah important. yeah i think it will be but you know it is what it is and all these teams have to deal with the same environment so i, I think you know it just is me. what it is you just gotta you just gotta operate at the best uh, of your ability and and of deal course, with whatever lays you'd out you'd rather you. see them play against each other and play for the sports themselves instead of getting of course a vitality in the quarterfinals and yeah but i feel no. I, I feel like that outside of like when we actually have tiebreakers, I feel like that rarely happens. Like I can think of one time, I think it was um, winter last year when Dignitas and Space Station Mm -hmm. went up against one another when Daniel was still there and Dignitas ended up beating them. Um, Yeah. I feel like that just rarely, rarely happens. And and we just outlined it over the last five minutes. It's it's almost certainly not going to happen. You know, we're, we're, we're going to have some wild shenanigans go on, but you know, I mean, it is getting, what it is. That's that's part of the fun too. I think yeah. getting a top two is so important in this format because yeah. of the extra points you get. You go from nine to twelve. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is the? Uh, you, let me, do you have it pulled up, Michael? What is the difference? Uh, like, it hasn't been uploaded one to split two yet. Um, it's probably somewhere in the rule book, but I do yeah. know it's. I think I would assume it's one point three times as much. I don't think that's what they did last year over the splits. Okay. Um, but I mean, just getting that extra push really buys you like a bad series like Absolutely. getting a top two you can i mean look at lg like they were eight to eight almost got ran out but they were never a doubt basically after the second region right. i mean it's l- literally what gentle mates did they got a top yeah. two and then two quarter final so. losses yeah. twice yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah, any teams that can make that top two, uh, especially if Carmen Corp is going to look the way they did domestically, um, yeah. that's going to be, I think, the biggest difference is who can make yeah. the final. Because well, it was literally uh, just Carmen Corp and the three teams that made a final. Like that yeah. was the. That's how it team. went. That is yeah, crazy. So. Yeah. Well, let's is. um, let's talk a little bit about Stizzy, who just, as we said, potentially uh, rumored to be leaving that Magnifico team and jumping across the pond, coming to NA. Um, with Dignitas alongside rumored Evo and uh, Arsenal. What do you guys make of that move? I feel like that is the most random thing that I have ever heard in roster moves. Well, I mean, anyone who's on Twitter knows how Arsenal feels about Europe. So That's true. he was like, just give me one of them. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't care just who it anyone. is. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you can bring me a, a 1900 twos player. I don't care. I just want one. Um, no, look, I mean, I think Evo and Stizzy see the game very similarly. Get the ball, get out of the way, right? And so I could see how it reminds me a little bit of uh, complexity last year where out of nowhere, CR and Razeball were queuing twos every day together, and then suddenly he was flying over. Um, I think that they have a chance. I think they're very much – I made a joke that it was just like a second M80 has now arrived sure. in North yeah. America, just like a kind of a hodgepodge of talent that they're going to hope to whip together into something uh the talent's there i've always been a big stizzy guy you know fan rl legend uh but um to me like this team the team's issue last split was inconsistency outside of arsenal and i don't know if this is what's going to make them less inconsistent like sure. the first all three regionals that i watched in arsenal played the best he's played since maybe him, Daniel, and Reddles were making runs and he was like 1v3 in Dignitas when he wasn't on Dignitas in, in, yeah. in those Swiss stages, right? Um, but Evo had an amazing, like star-making first regional and then just kind of wasn't yeah. like amazing, like wasn't right. the franchise player you wanted to be. And Gyro struggled series to series. And I think Stizzy definitely is better at Rocket League right now than Gyro, but he also struggled series to series in sure. in, in Europe. So... I mean, you got to hope that he's coachable. You can hope that VP can can lock in and get him get him to uh, you know adjust to a system that maybe works better for him and the team. But um, to me, if I was you know allowed to move pieces around like like and just bend or else system, I will. I would have gotten Arsenal out of there. But I know he he really believes in Evo, and I and I and I you, know, you got to respect that. I think he believes in the team. But yeah, I think it's all going to come down to consistency because we saw how good they could be with a lesser player. Um, you know. Legend, Gyro, no disrespect, but Stizzy's probably better than him right now. And uh, yeah, it's just going to be all about like, can they keep the vision they have for the sort of EU and a hybrid play style? Um, can they keep it consistent throughout an entire split? Yeah, I mean, I think that's putting aside the randomness, seemingly, of the move of Stizzy over to yeah. North America, there's still so many question marks about this team in and out of the game. I kind of I need to put a timer from from now until when they disband because <laughs> there are some personalities on that team mm -hmm. let me put it like that yeah, yeah there's some fire there and i respect it there's a lot of passion and i love to see that but i wonder how it will work with the three of them on one roster right. and that's something that brings up even more question marks outside of the gameplay outside of how they will tackle the rest of the north american competition and, and that's something I should put a timer on it. I want to see how long they can keep well, it going. Well, what's crazy about your point is I think what you and Michael said, like feed one another. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if you can't have all this straight on a team uh, basis, you know, a team level, not just one individual, but a team level, if we can't have all this straight, you're not going to achieve consistency. There's no way. Yeah. So well, also they, they were trying out players that were of that vein. Like the shift report stated Stizzy, Astral, and Justin. Three players who are not known for like rock solid. Well, stoic in fairness, medical. in fairness, they do have Violent Panda, who's got a ton of experience. And obviously, we don't know what coaches do behind doors. But Arsenal is a very vocal individual. He's somebody that can absolutely bring the energy up. Um, and so, you know, maybe those two guys have to kind of pump their chest out a little bit more yeah. and, and do a little bit more of the heavy lifting, but it could work out if they feel confident in those two no. and their, their leadership qualities. It, like I said, it's M80. Like you look at M80, they should have been at the land. The talent they have in that roster right. is more than the talent that OG and LG have. They have AJ, who's I still think is a top 10, 15 player in the region. Joris is a proven 
elite player and Nass is like anybody who's ever watched Nass play is raving about the guy outside of the RLCS. I think this is the same. Arsenal was sure. really, really good last split. Evo has clear like top end talent. And I think the same for Stizzy. I think they're very mm-hmm. similar and like they're standing among players right now. It's just putting it together. And M80 right. figured it out for Fridays. They couldn't figure it out for Saturdays. So, you know, if they if they can put it together, I, I don't see why they can't make the land, but I could also see them going an M80 route and just the again kind of blowing it. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't have time to mess around. It's one split and the season's over. So Obviously, wish them the best of luck. And, you know, as a fan, I want all of these teams to play to the best of their ability because then, you know, we just get the best fun. Rocket League. So, well, let's take a hop over to South America. Complexity, a rumor that they are replacing Dorito with Diaz. Up and coming um, player, obviously a very hot 1v1 talent, has absolutely balled out on a multitude of streams and events, um, playing some of the, the absolute best talent in the world uh, in the 1v1 arena, of course. <clears throat> and his team in South America had improving results throughout the split. They didn't do what we all expected them to immediately, but they were kind of getting the wheels going as the split went on. What do you make uh, of that move? And, and do you think, because complexity, I think everyone across the board had them as that clear ninth, like mm-hmm. one through eight at the major, you know, there's some um, variation about where people were placing them. But everyone had complexity, boom, in that nine spot, like clear above the the remaining um, teams at the major. Do you think that this gives them the potential to punch into that top eight? Um, no, I don't. I don't, I don't think so. I think, and it's nothing to do with them, really. But <laughs> they're just the other teams are just too good. Like you look at that top eight. <laughs> look at the teams that came out of there as losers. Three zero in Swiss Furia. Gen G, who beat the finalists, one of the finalists and went seven with the winner, and BDS, who beat the finalists and had one bad series. And then, like, you could even say Vitality is looked at as a little more negatively. They made the top four. They beat Furia. Like, every one of those teams in that top eight got quality, quality wins yeah. against each other. And no, like, I think the, the most indicative of where complexity was was that round five matchup, right? Here's your chance. Hey, nerves are coming in. There's a team that's expected to do really well. You weren't expected to do really well. You can go out there and ball out. They didn't look competitive outside of one game against Genji. Yeah. And that was a Genji that was like Jack was having a meltdown over his thumbstick. <laughs> like, you know, so Diaz, I think, is a great pickup for the future of this team. I think he's sure. so talented. Um, but... I mean, they. I, that, I don't think anybody thinks this makes them better than Furia, right? And if Furia can't even make it out the top eight, like, I mean, it's just tough to see. I think there's now six teams in Europe that I would put over complexity. There's two teams in North America by far that I put over complexity. And then maybe there's some others that I would like kind Falcons. of. Eh, Falcons, 100%. And there's other teams in Mina that might be getting better, right? Sure. So it's like, I just... I, I understand why they do it. And I think going forward, it'll make sense because I think CR and Dorito keep trying this thing. and It just doesn't work. But like, I, I just can't see them breaking in there. I don't think any team without the acquisition of a truly elite player like Joy like a chronic is going, yeah. is going to break in there. Yes. I think if, if they trust DS to be the best pickup for them and they're already in that major contention, right? Because of course, they first have to prove that they actually can make it back to the major with only two major spots, right? Mm-hmm. They're in a position where they want to get closer to yeah. Fury because there was, at the major at least, you could see there was quite a difference in level between Fury, who could really challenge the, oh, yeah. the other regions, and Complexity, who struggled to do that. Um, if they think that Diaz is the pickup for them to actually make that work, uh, I can see that firepower, you know, that that someone like Diaz brings from his 1v1 background, from what he has shown on W7M. I think that it's definitely a good pickup if it's yeah. enough to get any further along in in a major bracket. It's 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 tough, obviously, um, yeah. but it, it all depends on then how are the other regions looking? Right. You know, what, what teams actually look beatable? Because sometimes a team just comes out and just shows a little bit of weakness. And mm-hmm. if they can catch a team at a moment like that, I mean, if their rule one was expected to do a little bit better than they did, and yeah. if there's a couple of teams from 
uh, North America don't make it as far, or or from Europe even. I can I can see them going a little bit further for sure. Yeah. 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 That's how I feel as well. I, I think if if the question is, will they be a top eight ranked team in the world, which I think is a little bit different. Which I know it sounds crazy, but like your actual top eight teams may not be the top yeah, eight best course. teams, right? With all the matchups and everything. Yeah, exactly. And, and I happen. think this next major, if Europe sends four quality, I don't know how they won't. If mm-hmm. Mina Two gets a little stronger, if OCE gets a little stronger, if NA sends four that have potential to make top eight, and and that's no shade to LG and OG, but I just don't think they had that firepower. We saw it. Mm-hmm. LG gave it the best shot they could. And, and played competitively against Vitality, but still could not make it happen. If there is enough high-quality teams and shenanigans going on during Swiss, I think it's possible that Complexity poke in the top eight at the event, yeah. right? But I do, I do think that's a little bit different than saying, like, that is the eighth-best team in the world. So yeah. kind of a yes, kind yeah. of a no. But like you guys said, I think Diaz is a freaking phenomenal pickup. Michael, you said it best. For the future of that team, I, I, like, I don't know if there's a better thing that you could have done, right? Yeah. So. Complexity definitely on the uh, definitely on the upswing with that pickup, in my opinion. God, we do like sitting on fences, don't we? I love it, dude. This is a fence sitting fast. Like, we'll we'll get through the hot takes later <laughs> on in the episodes. We'll get there. Hey, don't my worry. defense is that's, the answer is usually somewhere around there. Unfortunately, I know people don't like it. <laughs> I might I might bring on my Skip Bayless wig or something. Just start firing from the hip. <laughs> They're terrible. All right, well, let's let's keep going. Let's keep going. we got a couple more regions to look at with some roster, uh, roster mania. OCE, the rumor is uh, power staying the same. Pioneers have dropped scrub, and that is official. Mm-hmm. And rumored to be replacing him with Super Locky. So just more like OCE moment. You've got like six to eight players that are actually talented enough to go international, and they just keep like... Yeah, they're just trying. They're Shuffle just putting. Up. They're like putting them in like. Different <laughs> they just keep moving around, right. and it's just those two power pioneers. They just. Yeah. Boop, boop, yeah. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> yeah and now no. Chiefs as well. Yeah, because the real rumor here is that it's basically just a swap. Okay. Trade. So Scrub will go to Chiefs. Yeah, that's that's the rumor. Well, I, I think right unfortunately, now. I do think that is a bit of a downgrade for Chiefs. Um, and I know mm-hmm. that that might be a little bit of a hot take, but I, I think Super Lucky is one of the like top three talents in yeah. that region. Um, I think yeah. Banana Head has been extremely and, and impressive, Fever. probably a clear one. And then you, you know, you I think Fever, you can make an argument for him in the top three, maybe Amphis on his day. Um, but Super Lucky, throughout what throughout last year, what he proved, um, you know, joining that Ground Zero team one third of the way through the season and then catching up to everybody else was unbelievable. So I think that. Yeah. Um, Bringing him into that power squad um, with former teammate Fiber there could, or excuse me, Pioneer squad, um, could be exactly what they need to trounce power and, and maybe have a little bit better result at the major. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that Fever is like the clear best player in the region. And the okay. reason I say that is because like literally since the open era started, the only teams that have been competitive out of OCE are teams with Fever on them. Yeah. Like I know the Pioneers team with Scrub, Banana Head and Super Locky, like they beat BDS, but like BDS was just, I don't know what yeah, happened there. Yeah, that was weird. And they like made it to round five of Swiss, but I mean, Fever's teams like make top eights and like get close to making top eights. Like yeah. the other teams aren't there, but so I think Power, like they are, they seem to have like some sort of like magic to them where they're able to play with these teams no matter who their roster is, as long as they have Fever and Torsos. Um, and I, I, despite saying that I'm really optimistic about this team. Um, I think Amphis and Super Lucky are the best offensive duo you can get in OC. And I think Fiber and Super Lucky have proven that they can work really well together. Yeah. Underrated thing about Ground Zero, they almost beat Carmen Corp, right? Like yeah, they I remember that. One they had a reverse sweep, huh? Carmen Corp. And Amphis has, I mean, in, in basically in the exact same role Banana Head was in, on on power Amphis was in and they looked just as good. Like they yeah. made it to round five of Swiss uh in oh what was it called? The fall major. I can't remember where it was. Um and then Rotterdam? they made top eight sorry? Rotterdam or what Rotterdam, yes. Yeah. And then they made I believe they made top eight in or top twelve or top eight in um Boston. They lost to rule one. 
But no, they made top 12, but they barely lost to rule one. So it's like, I think that those two together um, is going to be really, really fun. And I think they're going to be able to blitz teams in OCE the way that I don't think OCE really likes to do. The issue is always what the issue is with OCE is that they forget to play defense. I mean, there was no more painful a series to watch if you're a fan of a team than watching power against Gen G in the first round of that Swiss where they came out and just bludgeoned them and then gave up 13 unanswered goals. 13 unanswered <laughs> I mean, goals. It's kind of the fate of a team that is trying to punch above their weight, right? Sure. Yeah. If you're trying you gotta... to be, you saw it with Elevate. It was incredible to yeah. watch uh, them play in in uh, on on Friday in, in in Copenhagen, where they were just screaming at each other like bump, bump, bump more, bump more, bump more, because they just want to be the most aggressive team they can be, just to you know get the other team uncomfortable, mm -hmm. yeah. and then they can try to score, but. With a, a team from Oceania right now, they're not at the top of their power. Uh -huh. um, so they're just trying what they what they can, and w that is right. playing as aggressively as possible to force something. You know, yeah. because if they don't force anything, then their the other team will just their opponents will just take control of the entire game, and they won't even have a chance to to get touches on the ball, uh, yeah. basically, right? So. I mean, I mean, it's not that bad, but it, it, sometimes it feels that bad. Right. It um, looked that bad in that round one, I'll tell you. And sometimes it, it, it does look one. that bad. Sometimes so. it is that bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and what you said about they are just the best players in the region. So sometimes yeah. it does feel a little bit like they're recycling talent and it's always the same. And yeah. th there's nothing new coming from OC, but they are, they're still the best players. They I mean, are the best, Thursday's, that's right. They're still competing at that level. Yep. I mean, Fever is always there. So if you get someone like Super Lucky to move over to another team, yeah, why not? That is just the best available in the region. And yeah. um, I mean, maybe they have to import some players, but uh, yeah. as long as they rely on players from Australia and New Zealand, this is what they're working with. And oh. uh, they're doing a, a decent job with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll see what they bring to the table for the next split. Let's jump over to APAC because this is very interesting. Elevate. Pull off an upset for the region. They go to the major over the top of Gladiators, who I think you know 90% of people or, or more um, had predicted to make major. They get there, and of course, at the major, they go 0-3, unfortunately. But I think they had some moments uh, that, that were noteworthy. I think people definitely are cheering for the APAC and the SSA squads to, to you know get that series win, get that upset, um, show your home region and, and show the, the community at large what you're capable of, but they couldn't do it. And then they go make a roster change. Was that surprising to you guys? Is that expected from you guys? What do you, what do you make of that? It's a bizarre player though. It is a bizarre player. I didn't even mention it. ZPS from North America, which again, that just adds to the oddity of it for me. I, I couldn't believe it, to be honest with you. I thought, yeah. I thought, um, I mean, they, they, they did so well in split one, you know, even defeating the Gladiators to clinch that um, spot for major in that final event. Um, yeah. and, and I guess the reality is, just like everyone else, they are not satisfied with, with what they have brought to the table and they want more. Um, they will have to tap the sign, Hoodie. They will have to tap the sign. Tap the sign. Roster changes are almost always yeah. made for reasons outside of results. Right. It's unfortunate, but it's true. I also think that they could have had a good shot at the second major with mm -hmm. LCT, but sometimes it's not meant to be. Sometimes sure. they're like, we want something else. We have a different vision of the game. So very often it is somewhat game related, but yeah. not exactly the results. If you just look at their result sheets, it doesn't tell the full story. Right. And and I, I do believe that that has a play in, in this roster change, yeah. but it is still quite bizarre to see Sphinx, who proved himself as the best player in APAC at the moment, teaming up with no other than Zombie Poop Shark. And I, I would hey, by the way, to the mention... What, top two Rocket League names of all time. Only Sorry, second really? only Sorry. second to Jerome and DeBath. Oh, wrong SSA guy. I was ready for Sweaty Clarence <laughs> and I got it wrong. Um, no, I was going to say, I do believe that ZPS was planning to move to APAC anyway for okay. reasons outside of maybe just to compete, maybe because sure. you want to live there, maybe has some family there or something. So I think it was more of like, hey, I'm coming to APAC. Like, you want to scrim? See Let's if try it works. Okay. Like, yeah. 
Um, I, it definitely looks more bizarre outside of it because it's like, you know, yeah. why are you picking up a random bubble NA player when they're probably on the same level as another top? And, and he didn't even compete in the last split. He wasn't on yeah. a team. Yeah. And so I thought one of the funniest things someone noticed is that the funniest assortment of people of all time uh, over the last or just over the last two years was the Dark Zero roster with, yeah. with the greatest, you know, what many people believe to be the greatest player of all time. Creams, who has gone and you know stock has just absolutely blasted off, and ZPS, who didn't, who's now playing in APAC. Mm -hmm. Like, imagine trying to like piece together those three players right now. Like, what do Turbo Pulses, ZPS, and Creams with, have in they, with Coach Gregan, by the way? Yeah, with Coach Gregan. Like, <laughs> what a what a strange group they had yeah. going on there. But um, yeah, I mean, that literally look, was just picked off name value and yeah, yeah, just um, looked fun. Well, well, with and, that. With that, do you think that they can go to that second major over Gladiators or, or do Gladiators exact revenge on them? They have Sphinx. They have the best player. As we saw from the LAN, where the best player at the LAN dragged his team to top four. Sure. They, if you have the best player, you always have a chance. <laughs> and if they, because if you have a player on the, that the other team has no answer for, right. and maybe Gladiators is labbing and they're figuring out a way to stop them or stop the way they play. Um, that could go. That could be factoring into the roster move. Maybe they were worried that they that maybe Elevate were worried that Gladiators had yeah. had all this time to figure out how to stop this kind of Sphinx oriented team, and then they wanted to switch things up. But yeah, I think um, they have the best player, and if you have the best player, you have a chance. I've, I said that the first time we ever did this podcast. So yeah, I, I think. I mean, it, have, eventually, it, it was decided in the last series of the last regional for them, right? Right. It was the finals where Elevate actually met Gladiators in, in the Open Qualifier 3 to see who was going to the Major because they were equal in points before that. And Elevate won 4-1, but you know, it could have gone the other way as well. So right. if we just assume that it's kind of an, an equal move mm -hmm. and it doesn't really improve or you know, change the team too much, for Elevate, then yeah, it depends on how good Gladiators are playing. I can see Elevate representing the region again, yeah. but you know, there's absolutely a chance that Gladiators will just take it all right now. Okay, well, we've talked about a lot of cool stuff regarding um, some of the major teams and some of the big contenders for majors as well, but this is by far the uh, most exciting roster change in potentially two, three, maybe four years. We have... Legends of the scene, Scrub Killer, Greasy Meister, and Rimco reviving Weedem Girls. That's now we've been cool. talking about so the, back. We've been talking about the Francophone <laughs> yeah, squads. So we've been talking about how Oxygen and Magnifico may have. We forgot about Weedem Girls. This is just the coolest thing that's ever happened, isn't it? I, I was I was thinking about this today when I was on my drive home. I know Greasy is like a legendary player, but all I can think about when I think of Greasy is like Neat Mike trying to fight him. And I don't know why that's like the only thing, but I just remember watching a video years ago where Neat Mike was like talking so crazy about him. And was like, I want to punch him in his fucking face. And I was like, we, that's, that's the type of personalities you need back in the RLCS scene is people who try to get people to punch each other in the face. I forgot um, about that, but yeah. he's such a legend. It's crazy yeah. because what I remembered when I read this news was that Greasy Meister got sent a contract by Mocket while... He was still in the tournament playing <laughs> incredible. And he <laughs> put a game. video on Twitter of him burning the contract in his in his uh, hearth, in his fire. Wow. That, uh, it's just, just the, like the most the coldest tweet yeah. ever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean look, is this team gonna make a regional? No. But well, are they gonna be a great time? Maybe. Come on. Look at the 16th best team in Europe last year was Su, right? In terms of point ranking, yeah, but or no, probably more. They made a top eight, but like, look at the teams. Like, that's Scrub couldn't make it with players that like like play the game or have been playing the game a lot. Um, right. Have thing like these guys are here for one reason, one reason only is to entertain us during team streams, and you have to respect <laughs> it. Those day two and day three streams, I think they're a day three team, and you know you're right. Maybe I'm just out of my off my rocker, and I'm so oh, nostalgic about that. I don't want to see them fail in a main event because if they, have, they make a main event they have to win like just for me <laughs> maybe um, some crazy seating that just cleans yeah, out this that's beautiful right. path in the yeah, lower bracket for them storybook <laughs> but i mean look those i hope they stream their comms 
I hope that it's oh, just like to. pure content for a split. Yeah. I think this is the best That's thing you me. can do as a as a past your pl- prime RLCS player is yeah. turn it all into content. We saw Rizzo do it last split, yeah, and cheeks. it was an absolute yeah, it was an absolute success. I want to see more of this. This is awesome. Uh, it's genuinely such a win for the community. I mean, they can break all the records when it comes to age. Remco is 28 years old. I mean, wow. Greasy... Represent Remco, well, Scrub's like 23. On. Like, Scrub's like younger than me, I'm pretty Greasy sure. is 28 too. I mean, Scrub, uh, yes, he's a baby compared to the rest because he always has been yeah. uh, back in the day. Mm-hmm. He's 20 years old only. But with two 28-year-olds... Scrub's year 20 olds, years old? Yes, he is. Yeah, he's, he's turning 21 very oh, soon in May. His journey with his stuff began when he was like five. Well, I yeah, thought yeah. he was like 23. I thought he was like Chassette age. I cannot believe that he's 20 years old. He's from 2003. He's oh, from May, May 8th. I thought he was like an 01 or an 02. That's just even crazier, even though I knew he was young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, no, he he was a wonder kid. Yeah. He was no, the I, Zen back in I, the day. But... I, he got, they should have changed the age restriction back in the day. He'd yeah, back then, yeah. that's right. <laughs> Could have played in season three. But, Bro, but it, he's he teaming was... up with two players who were 28 years yeah. old. I mean, yeah. that is, I mean, Goody's not it happens in other esports, but that just doesn't happen in Rocket League. Uh, I like it. Let the twenty-eight oh, yeah, year old get. Let, let them get into He's the like, tournament so, and listen what's to me. So yeah, old about twenty-eight. He's spry, <laughs> hey, that's, you know? The thing is, in this world, it's old. It just is. Yeah. You know, there's no it's way to fight it. Come get around. I, you know, it. when I step outside of my home and I get into the real world, obviously I'm very young. But in this space right here, I'm old bones. That's just what it is. Yeah. yeah. Definitely exciting. Uh, exciting stuff. If you if you are a newer fan, maybe you're like an open era circuit person you have got to catch this stuff it is going to be incredible content some of the we're not kidding when we say legends some of the legends of the scene mm-hmm. um, world champions you know uh, i i am Absolutely. confident that some of maybe many of today's players watch these guys were inspired by these guys and and you know wanted to play similar rocket league or, or achieve the um, accolades that some of these guys have mm-hmm. With that said, um, that's going to conclude the roster mania for all regions except NA. But outside of Sizzy to dig, we don't really have a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little uh, disappointing. I mean, your, your top two are not changing. We know that. Mm. From there, we have Dig, who's made a change. I don't think LG's making a change. I don't think OG's making a change. It seems like MAE's going to be sitting still. Rebellion had the uh, brief rumor, but it seems like it's quieted down. Is it just going to yeah. be the same? I mean, the question is, is why? Right. Like after you get boat raced by two teams, is that bad? You'd assume that every team is trying to make a change to get up to that level. Um, so, you know, I will pose a question is, you know, three. I, I think there's like three strong opinions on or three strong reasons or speculations is the word I was looking for as to why this is happening. The stalemate. Yeah. It's either hopium that, hey, we just got bracketed. We, we can keep sure. we can we could have made it over any of those two teams. Um, complacency, which of course is every uh, Rocket League esports content creator's favorite word with NA. Like they just pretend that they all sit on their, they don't play the ranked all day, they sit on their contracts. <laughs> or three, a genuine admission that they are just not good enough to compete with G2 and Gen G, and they're just going to try to get those last two thing spots and maybe make land and maybe make top 12. Those, like, <laughs> it might be another reason, right? I think one of the, one of the, the potential copium. regions. That they're right yeah. winning the scrims. One of the reasons also could be is that with the new format and the lack of um, stability, teams don't want to buy out players. Sure, right? They sure. don't want to invest yeah, as much. Yeah. So right. you can't go and buy out a, a top player. But there's still tons well, l- l- of let's, what, unsigned like players. What, I, I'm assuming we're, we're talking about Space Station, genuine contender. M80, genuine contender. Yeah. I'm still and, throwing and Rebellion in there. I know they flubbed. I'd say OG as well. They did not look good. They did not look good. Okay, so so, but what do you do? I think so Is, for Space Station. Do we have the pool to grab somebody off of Space Station or M80 or Rebellion? I don't think so. I but I think there's unsigned young players that you can mold into it. I don't know how you can see what's yeah, happening with fair. Raleigh and Chronic in the last two years, right? And Zen, uh, he's a bit of an outlier, but still, right, right, right. And not say, hey, we can get a Frosty. We can get a I'm, Scribbles is weird because he is very young, and I can understand older players maybe not wanting to have to. It's like babysit a kid, but Frosty is a great example. Why hasn't anyone picked up Frosty? He's clearly shown that he's good enough to play in the league and he can be molded into a great player. Someone did pick him up. And they dropped him. They just dropped him right back off. Because he didn't turn into <laughs> prime Justin two months into his professional career. Yeah. Like, what about the other player on the sub Reveal. What about 
five up who everyone was like five up so good. He yeah. might be the best player on a top eight team in North America. Not signed. No one's talking about it. Right. right. What about Eris? Right. Eris was trying out with all these top teams and they couldn't get it. So there, there's there's there is talent to be signed outside of the signed teams. Yeah. Right. But no one's making a move. Go for I think, go um, you know, on, on that. And I don't I'm not saying this is a rebuttal, but I, I'm assuming that probably feels too risky. I think right now they look at this and they say, well, all we got to do is be LG and OG in points. But that, see, that's the issue for me. You shouldn't be thinking that. You should be thinking, how do we get to the top four of Worlds? Like, we shouldn't be trying to make majors. Well, do you think or, Frosty to Space Station is going to make them top four in the world? I think they should be delusional enough to think that that way. No. Because the European teams no. are delusional enough. <laughs> no, Monkey Stop Moon, that. the best player no, they're, they're, in look, the they're looking at their situation, and they're evaluating it and making the best choice. Now, I'm not saying that I agree with that, but that's what they're doing. And, like, M80, I, I'm, if I'm them, I'm not making a change. That's No, they're the one talent. team I think shouldn't. They, they just need to figure it out. They have the talent And, and to be, Space Station, uh, I think, have, like, maybe, if you could pull Justin... Maybe, mm-hmm. but even then, I think you're like it's still kind of a question mark. Is he actually going to perform better than Hawks or Chicago? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think that at this point, like you got to start taking risks because I can't look at the other region that's picking up new players every single season, and their teams just keep getting better because they're investing into developing them into becoming great threes players. Which, by the way, NA has done and just only does it like sparingly for no reason. Like they literally did it with Chronic and LJ last year i think at this point you know like i said i don't do i think any of those teams outside of g2 and genji can make top four worlds no but they should be trying to make it because what's the uh, what's the what's the um alternative you don't make the major you already didn't make the major you're just back where you started like so i don't know i feel like they like we gotta start taking swings because you know maybe they're not a finished product yet sure but what's the alternative getting the four seed, going to London, making round five and losing. Okay. They go to Worlds because you out, outperformed OG. Like, and then, yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> I think, I guess, yes, from an org perspective, that is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. I think from a competitive From a player perspective, perspective too, I think that's fantastic. I, I mean, I, I definitely respect and admire what you're saying, and I'm not even, I don't even think it's wrong. Yeah. But I think, you know, you, you laid it out as one of the options. Yeah. I don't and, you know, think, the more I, I said it, that, the more it sounded kind of good. I don't think Dig or Space Station is looking and saying like, yeah, with one move, we'll beat G2 or Gen.G. I don't think they're... And, and would it be nice if they truly believed it? Sure, but like I understand why they don't. Yeah, I, I actually think... It sounded amazing, Michael. I actually think It's, it's Dig, the first time I actually hear the, the passion I again. Think Dig, I think Dig actually is delusional enough to think that they're like right there now. That's why I like the move. Because I think that they made a weird sure. change because they thought that weird change was the secret. Right. And I want to see some more swings and some more misses. Because if you swing and miss, <laughs> no one... I, if you swing and miss, no one remembers. They go, remember that time Stizzy was on thing? That was weird. But if it works, they're like, how did they think of that? Right? Sure, sure. Like, that's, that that's what I think North America needs because we've yeah, seen it that's happen fair. in Europe. They have played it safe forever. You're right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's that's... I think it's just... You know, they're getting cold feet. And I do understand it from an org perspective. I right, do understand right. you don't want to invest a bunch of money into a team that's not going to make a major. Yeah, yeah. But I think from the player's perspective, they should be at least trying to push for something. Right. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, it, well, like you said, I mean, you're, you don't like. It just feels uninspired and, and I mean, sad even, you know, like what we're aiming for is just to be fourth. Yeah. But, you know, it's a very absolute... ROI based team building strategy. Right. Well, I think. I mean, I don't want to, I guess, veer too far off, but I think part of that is what the change was from last year to this year. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no more third split. The season a lot, is a lot shorter. You know, the, these orgs, if they're still throwing similar dollar amounts at this and they're not getting back, you know, a similar amount of, like, screen time, mm-hmm. um, you know, chance at ma- three majors, compare, uh, you know, two majors now compared to three, that's, and less spots, you know, four yeah. instead of five. So, and no wild card. Yeah. Um, it's definitely no. a scary thing, but I think um, um, if we don't see much happen here, and I know that everyone talked about like the great reset last season, which I think happened to some degree, but mostly at the very top. Mm-hmm. Um, I do feel like I mean, we've got to see a we've got to see an entire explosion. You know, yeah. we've had we've had a couple of players retire or a player retire. I think a couple more will retire throughout this year and into the off season, and. Michael, what you're calling for, I think, is is inevitable. I mean, these players are 
talented, and we've heard NA top tier players for the longest time say, yeah, they've got mechanics, but they don't think. They don't play the game right. They don't know how to play, blah, blah, blah. Well, mm. we got to teach them. Somebody got to teach them because, look, when Kofor goes into a recent show match, and I, I watch him, and he's just triple flip resetting on command, and Frosty is one of the fastest players like in the game when he goes to these regionals, and they have like such minimal experience, you, you got to look at that and say, look, we could turn that into, we could turn that into something great. That's what happened with Chronic. Like, yeah. Chronic was a bubble player. He was a half-in, half-out bubble player who was only allowed to play in the RLCS by his parents because it, an org as big as Gen G said, hey, listen, this is real. We're going to pay him a it's lot of real. money, and this is going to be his job now, right? Yeah. And because of that, Jack and Nolly, Jack admitted, because I, I remember there was a clip of Jack where he was like, someone had asked him, like, why, like how did Chronic and Two-Piece not, like, Weren't they like, how are they not like NA Queso? And he was like, because Chronic wasn't as good until he learned how to challenge the ball properly because he played right. with us, right? Like, and I understand yeah. players have to get to a certain level, and I, but I think there are players on that level. Yeah, like, I there's agree. no more RLRS where you can like play the ninth through 16th best player teams in your thing and then get into the RLCS and then get all those scrims. Like, yeah. it is kind of on them, right? Yeah, yeah. But they're not going to do it. So we are. How about that? Okay. <laughs> Well, at least the top of NA showed that they're there. They're willing. That they're right there right. With, yeah. with the but world that, but, top. And the rest is, it, yeah, maybe it won't happen yet this split and this season. So mm -hmm. things are moving a little bit slowly, it feels like. But I do have hope for NA. It yeah, does feel like there's more eyes on the rookies. There are a lot of rookies. I oh, mean, yeah. The, the next up prospects, they're, it's just all over the place with North American players. Yeah. So there's a lot that goes right, but they haven't really gotten all the chances yet sure. to be on on the on the good rosters on the teams that yeah. can help them grow totally. as much as they need to grow yeah. to be in that spot where chronic was a year ago yeah, uh, yeah. And, and yeah it's coming we'll, we'll get it's there. coming whether, i'm whether, sure we'll get there whether these teams decide to do it now or it happens organically through like older legacy talent just being kind of shoved out and retiring and having worse and worse results yeah. it will it will happen for sure it i, I have faith